Welcome to another episode of Power Alphas. I'm one of your co-hosts, Sabby Piscatelli. And as always, I got my beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous oh. fiance. <laughs> we put gorgeous Amanda in there. Amanda Sacramento. How you doing today, baby? <laughs> I'm doing great. Welcome, everyone, to another episode. Very excited. Happy to be here. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited. We... Uh, a lot of the good things going. You know, last week's uh, podcast with Mojo was, uh, I thought, amazing. Yes. Um, it was such a tremendous story to hear a man who has been successful at so many different levels, but yet has had failures as well. And I think um, him telling his story, that he continues just to go out there and, and progress. Persevere. Persevere, Perse That's exactly. That's a hard word to say. That's a hard Persevere. word. Persevere. <laughs> Did I say that right? Persevere. Persevere. Yeah. Persevere, which I, yeah. I got a lot from that episode. Absolutely. Because like you just said, you know, we, we all have those hiccup moments, but he's very positive, which is a good thing too, and never kind of reflects on the, the negative, um, which is what we strive to do and be, um, yeah. especially on this podcast. So it was, um, yeah, it was a great episode. And I think you good. guys have a lot of, um, uh, a lot of similarities in, in career paths and whatnot. So um, it was good. Very good. Very good. How you doing, babe? Anything new with you? What's going on? Um, what's going on? I've been busy traveling a lot. I yeah. did my um, New York signing, which was awesome. I have my WrestleMania tailgate party coming up in Philly. Uh, yep. That'll be here before you know it, of which um, is going to be a lot of fun. And Mojo will be there as well. Um, so it'll be it'll be exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, no crazy gifts this week. Um, you know, no crazy <laughs> gifts. Good. No more no gifts. No crazy gifts. Um, but yeah, it's been great. And um, yeah, what have you been up to? Uh, nothing really. I mean, a lot of um, you know, I'm getting kind of excited. I know we kind of briefly talked about it, but I know we have a drink coming out soon. Mm, um, yes. And it's kind of really getting, it's getting going now. You know, at first couple months, obviously you're talking about it, you're creating a team. Um, it's a process. It's for a sure. process. But I think now I'm starting to get a little more excited because now we're in the, you know, creating the formula, the taste, all that stuff. So yeah, it's that fun. that is something I'm actually really, really excited for. Um, you know, just always looking for opportunities for business, more cash flow. We've had a couple nice dinners with our financial team. Um, meeting on with them about you know some more investing. Um, just always trying to grow, always trying to learn in, in that space. A little bit of entrepreneurish, a little bit, but sure. um, you know it's it's every day. I think um, for me, I just fall in love with the process, man. I fall in love with the routine. I fall in love with uh, just getting better every day. You know, um, for sure. I think individual motivation is is. is is what is key. And I think it gets hard. Life's hard, right? Like we all have dull moments, but I just look forward to every day getting up, you know, creating my routine, getting my routine in and kind of starting my day and enjoying life with you. And, you know, um, being grateful every single day, waking up with that attitude of gratitude yes. um, has really helped me, um, you know, positive mindset, positive mindset. And, uh, you know, always learning from uh, trying to do new things with that, with the morning routine. I know Gary Brecca is always saying new things, you know, we're out, the other day, I'm in the neighborhood at like seven in the morning, with my little shorts on, and uh, for the first sunlight, and a couple of neighbors walk by me with their dog, looking at me like, "What the heck is this kid doing?" Man? But <laughs> you know, I was doing me... my grounding. <laughs> I was doing my grounding in my sunlight. All right. <laughs> so that brings me to something, and Ben, I wanted to include you in on this because you're the one that Googled it that time we were talking. Oh my goodness! So <laughs> my good friend Paige Van Zant, um, that I've done collaborations with. Um, she has a podcast with her husband, Austin, a kick-ass love story. And I like to listen to it here and there. So if you guys want to go check it out. Um, and the other day I was listening to it while I was getting my eyelashes done and there, or at least Austin for sure is doing, what is it called? Pernium? Per yeah. Pernium or something? Pernium or something. Dude, Google this right now and tell me the benefits of this, please. So, well, they talk about it a little bit. They just kind of started it. And I've been to her house. It's super private. Like, you know, they, they walk around naked. Like, you know, you do too. But we have neighbors, like, that could probably see. But um, Austin's been doing it. And Paige had me dying because she said that... You know, she'll check on the camera sometimes and she'll like screenshot and like we send it to him and all that. So I was dying. But he says he does. He counts to, like 120 or something the most because like you can really they kept talking about like 
God forbid, getting, you know, burning your taint, <laughs> which I was like, ow, that would really yeah, hurt. Yeah, I mean, it says, okay, so it says, so. I need to hear this. <laughs> butthole, <laughs> butthole sun. Everything you need to know about perineum sunning. Perineum sunning, a.k.a. butthole sunning, is ten, a trendy wellness practice that involves exposing the taint to sunlight. It has no proven benefits and lots of potential health risks. <gasps> that's, that's what it That's says? what Google, when I look it up, Google. Now, it gives me a couple of, like, alleged benefits and risks and greatest and, and stuff like that. So let me do a little research on what is the actual benefits of it. Yeah, yeah. you know what? That, oh, <laughs> there it is. I found it. Boosts the mood. Ooh. Helps you regulate your sleep. Increases libido. Uh, sparks creativity. Attracts success, successful and positivity. Enhances longevity and stamina. Cleanses the genital of bad energy and germs. But there's Yo. no science to back any of these claims up. I was about fact, to say, no, listen. I was it's not FDA I approved. Was, I was about to say, that is, that is, sounds like somebody got drunk on a computer one night and said, this is good for your butthole. And just started typing on his computer and said, oh, benefits is uh, libido goes up. And yeah. What do you mean libido and energy goes up? What are you, well, what are you talking about? Well, um, it, that is funny that you say that because I almost think like, you know, how, like anyone can edit people's Wikipedia because like mine's edited and like people have my birthday wrong, whatever. Yeah, so yeah. it kind of sounds like it's one of those. But being the benefits of vitamin D, I think they say because it's going directly in you rather than, you know, on you. I don't know how to. So hold on. To, so like it's going in how's you. it directly going in you? You have to spread your yeah. butt apart? Like well, leg, yeah, legs gotta, overhead. You gotta put that you gotta nah, put that taint up there, man. Nah. You gotta taint up in the air. Nah. You might have to spread the cheeks. I'm not Listen. even gonna lie. Especially your ass. You're really gonna have to spread the cheeks Listen. because Listen. your shit's like closed. <laughs> Listen. 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 The gate's closed. Listen. Gates are closed. I'm sorry. First of all, there is no science backing this, so they need to stop with this, man. Well, like, no, we don't know. We don't know, really. I mean, and well, listen, I, as I learn more about know. it, yeah. as I learn more about the sun and the energy of the earth, and even Gary Brecker uh, speaks on it a lot, I mean, yes, God gives us everything we really need to be a healthy human. Um, mm -hmm. And the sun is something that is a little misconstrued when, you know, the sun can heal us. The sun can really mm -hmm. help us grow and, 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 you know, become better. But in moderation, obviously, you know, obviously, you know, skin cancer is a serious thing, but, yeah. you know, but a whole butthole to the sky. I don't know about that, man. <laughs> well, I really don't know about that. <laughs> so your, your, um, your lips apparently are the same oh. texture as your butthole, I guess. Right. Yeah. So they have, it's the same, I don't know what, what would you call that? Um, um sensitivity, I guess. Yeah. Um, right. so you can't do it for more than like like you, yeah, like, like, like they say, 30, like 30, 45 seconds kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it says like a minute and a half, minute I think. Half, yeah. After that, like, no. Correct. And, uh, and yeah, I don't know. Ben, ben listen, go yeah. go do it this weekend. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we joke around because in wrestling, we used to have to do this stretch, which actually feels really good for your neck, where you literally legs go on overhead. your back, legs overhead, and like you could really get your legs back there. And like, you know, some guys are flexible. I feel like you could do it, but. Um, that's kind of what you have to do unless you do it the other way. I, I don't know. Anyway, no, I think we're going to the only way. You uh, that's the only next way. topic. We're going to move on from move on. Uh, tainting your, <laughs> anyway. sunning, your so, taint. sunning your taint. Change subject. So <laughs> another thing, babe, is I'm excited that we are, I wouldn't say finished because we never finished till the day of the wedding, but we've kind of got everything in order. I yeah. think now we got everything. <sighs> The venue, we got everything that we need for the major stepstones to have a great, great wedding. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm really excited, man. I really, really am excited. I know we're still what? What are we? What are, what are we? Well, we're well, still we're like seven, April, May, six June, months July, away. August, September, October, November. We're about still eight. Did I do that right? No, you didn't do it right. April, May, May, June, June July, July, August, September, October, November. Eight. Okay, eight. So seven, eight. Um, I am very excited as well. I was I was stressing a little bit um, finding entertainment for the wedding because it's hard to like just look up people and you don't really know. So long story short, we think we, we have the right entertainment group, which um, once it's all said and done, we can announce that too, which will be cool because um, I think other people out there, it might help for p other people mm. planning weddings and whatnot. But um, I'm excited for that too. And we have gotten a lot lot of things done and it's nice to get it done ahead of time and early this way we can like focus on other little things as we go um 
with the wedding planner. Well, that could definitely, I mean, anybody knows that. I mean, that entertainment can make or break a great wedding. Yeah, um, that was like a big part. That's a big part of your wedding. Like 100%. you have to, you have to like them, the voice, you have to, it's the music. It's, it's like everything. I love it. Lighting. Um, Arthur Avenue's doing great, right? Dad's Deli doing yeah, great. Yeah, Deli's doing good. You guys are kicking good. butt up there. We're, um, we're probably trying to get on DoorDash soon, which is a little bit of a process, but um, it's been doing doing well. You know, after the holidays, it always slows down a little bit, but they had like the big St. Patty's Day parade, which was good. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been it's been doing good. That's awesome. I yeah. love to see that. So so much potential. That place is unbelievable. If you guys are in New York and listen to this podcast, you want the best sandwich you ever had in your entire life. Entire life. Go to Arthur Avenue Deli. Trust me when I yes. tell you. Arthur Avenue Deli in Maya Pack. In um, Maya Pack. We make great sandwiches. I love it. I um, love it. So uh, we have a question. I know I don't usually go to the questions right away, but this is... Um, I love questions. We love questions, yeah. This was um, an interesting one that we got from Olivia. And... It's for me, the question. Sorry, babe. No. Um, right. My question is for Mandy. I'm currently in judo. I'm an orange belt, but I want to be prof I want to be a professional wrestler. Any advice on how to get into wrestling? You're my idol. I bought your banner for the love of wrestling. Also, I saw you had a cool flask water bottle. This thing? Oh. Where'd you get it? Um, so we could talk about our hydrogen water a little bit after that, too. So um, thank you, Olivia, for being a huge fan, first of all. And um, when people ask me this question about, you know, if they want to get into wrestling, it's a little hard for me to answer sometimes because, like we just kind of spoke about, there's so many different walks of life and so many different avenues you can go or get into it later on. You know, there's not like professional wrestling doesn't really, um, you can't really get into professional wrestling until you're like, over 18 or whatever it may be. So the fact that you do judo and you're an orange belt and you have an orange belt, um, that's amazing. I think stuff like that will definitely help you with the training. I think having a good um, like mixed uh, background as well, not just like the judo and, and wrestling aspect of it. It's like, you know, being athletic and trying other sports. I don't know your age, but however um, old you are, like it's always good to try different things. And then when the right time is, you know, the right age or whatever it may be, I would keep training as hard as you can and, you know, network. Social media nowadays is, um, is, is great that we have it, but you can network and, um, be able to reach out to maybe independent companies or um, just see other people out there. Maybe there's maybe there's a, a training center in your town that you live in or close to you and just kind of like research that kind of stuff and just never give up. You know, if that's what you want to do one day, you'll do it. If you put your put your hard work in your mind and you manifest, I believe in that for sure. Um, I think you'll do it. So good luck to you. And our hydrogen water bottles. Do you want to talk about the hydrogen water bottles? The hydrogen water bottles. Um, actually, you know what's so funny? That's a great question because I actually just saw a clip um, two days ago. So I know hydrogen water bottles has been getting a lot of traction, mm -hmm. you know, in the last probably two months. And Gary Brecker is probably one of the main reasons why. Shout out to him. But this is the one that he kind of endorses. I don't know if this is actually his. Um, but this one is an expensive one. Um, Echo Go. Echo Go is the name. Echo Go. So Echo Go, if you're listening, um, you know, we'll take care of you. I got you. But um, <laughs> no, I, I like it because one, Gary Brecker was using it. So instant credibility for me. Um, but this is a little more of an expensive one. I actually just saw a clip. It's so funny. You, this question came up like two days ago about that. You go on Amazon mm -hmm. and, you know, you can get a hydrogen water bottle anywhere from $30 to $250. Yeah. This one was $250, right? Yeah, about right two two fifty, around two fifty. Okay, so you know the old saying, "You get what you pay for." They actually was saying the ones that are like thirty dollars, forty dollars. There's actually some that they're doing studies that like it's not that great of a machine. That actually chlorine is getting put into the water. Um, so if you are uh, listen, if you are into the hydrogen water, which we both are, yes. um, the health benefits of it, I do recommend um, to spend a little extra money. You don't have to buy this one. It's the most expensive one I think I've seen. Um, but there's I, other good ones on there's Amazon. There's other. There's too, a lot though. of other good ones. We actually, I had a good one we, on yeah. Amazon. What was it called? Um, it was the Brita remember. one. I forgot what name was, but it was it was made by Brita. Um, that one was like a hundred, maybe a hundred and twenty dollars. Um, 
but I'm big on the hydrogen water. I love it. It's really good for um, anti-inflammatories. Um, it's good for your gut. Um, it's it's just it's cleaner. It feels cleaner. It's like you know how you drink a lot of water, you get like that yeah. bloated feeling. You don't get that bloated feeling with hydrogen water. Um, so if you're gonna go down the route, uh, I do think just be careful. Make sure it's okay to spend a little extra money. I think. You know, you probably can get in a good one for eighty dollars, but I, I wouldn't go for the cheap ones no. that I seen on Amazon for like thirty bucks, forty bucks, fifty bucks, and um, you just don't really know what you're getting. So, uh, not worth it. This one was good. Health is wealth, right? So if you're yes. gonna spend the money, um, spend an extra couple spend, bucks. Spend if you can, you know, spend an extra couple bucks on a good one. But these ones are really like, and we got matching pink and blue. Yeah, pink and blue. So people are always looking at us like on the plane. I'm always, we're like, we don't put our hydrogen, we press the button. <laughs> um, but I love, it. I was kind of making fun of Savvy in the beginning for it. Not I had my cigar, fun of I had him. the cigar bar at one night. Remember you yeah, were making yeah, fun of me? Yeah, that was good. No, but the beginning, before I knew the benefits and researched myself, I was like, he, he the first bottle he got um, was smaller than this. So this is about 250 milliliters. And Sabby's was like, I don't know, under two. That first one. So he literally oh would take a sip and it would be, be gone. gone. And I'd be like, you're going to have to fill your water up every two seconds. I know. But even, th even this one's like eight to ten ounces. So it's kind of, you know, you, you, you there's two settings to this one. There's a five minute and a ten minute yeah. setting. So, yeah, you, you let it go five minutes. And you pretty much can drink the whole thing in one in one sip. But um, also, but hydrogen water I've learned in my research is once it shuts off, um, you can't let it sit for a long time. The hydrogen actually starts to deplete through the water and, and, and disappear. So it's actually yeah. kind of good. That's only eight ounces, nine ounces, ten ounces, because you could, you know, hit the button, hydrogen comes in, drink the whole thing right away, and you get all the good benefits. But you know what? I, I think it's just always, um, for me personally, it's always learning new things for your health, how you can help your body become healthier. So this is just one of the tools I think we found last couple months that were kind of. Uh, intrigued on and I think that's kind of you know even with our our drink we talked about a little coming out you know our whole goal with our drink is the health benefits of it to have a healthy natural energy drink that you can not only get your vitamins you get your minerals you get everything you need for the day um and you get energy so that's why I think we're, we're inspired to to come out with our own drink because it kind of reflects our lifestyle so for sure yeah you know, definitely it's good it's exciting it is it's exciting so any more questions because I love the Q&A's because oh, um, yes. I think questions are good um, here we go from David. What's the best experience you've had together? A huge fan from the other side of the Atlantic from Portugal. I love you guys so much. Thanks, David. Um, all the way from Portugal. What is the best experience we've had together? together? That's actually, yeah, together. Mm. That's a good question. We've had a lot of great experiences together. So, Let's the both best. think for a second. I want to see if we're on the same page. I know, with this one, one, two, three, and we <laughs> say the same. No. Um, um, you want to go first? Our best experience together. Together. I think it'd be good if you guys both give what you guys think. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. Yeah, each one. For sure, because they could be different, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have different opinions. You, you know, can... I got to be honest with you. I think the first one that jumps out at me. And it's not really a good or eh, it is. I think what it I is. kinda know what he well. I think one of our best experiences we ever had together was the time we rekindled and we went to Tulum. Mm. I just I just remember that weekend um yeah. being different. I just remember, you know, we, we were going through some stuff, uh we broke up. I it was probably me, you know, me doing stupid messing <laughs> up. So I'll take all the blame for that. But um it was something that, like, I think our time apart, and then when we rekindled, it was like the most powerful emotional feeling I had. And we went to uh, Tulum, and we had literally like our suite was on the beach. Like, yeah, I mean, we would sit. I could we could sit on our bed and like spit into the ocean. Like literally, mm -hmm. like it was like like if we once we had a hot tub, and then once we walked off the, the wood, and we were on sand, the sand, and we had yeah. our own private, and there was nobody around. And uh, we did a lot of cardio, a Lots lot of cardio, of cardio. <laughs> but it was just like, cardio. I mean, cardio like two, three, four times a day. Uh, yeah. But no, so honestly, it was a just a lot of making up. Yeah, it was a lot of it was like a it was yeah. it was almost like that to me personally, to me. I don't think we ever I don't think we ever look back from then. I don't think that like for me as a man, I could speak on this. That was at the moment in my life where I made that conscious decision like. Don't you ever mess up again and you have an amazing thing in front of you. And I think for me it was a very powerful 
moment in a, a weekend for me. And I remember just, it was just beautiful. Weather was beautiful. We had, it was just our own way. It was like, we were like in our own world. Yeah. Like we never even left. We never left the suite and the beach until, unless we went to dinner to eat. That's it. Yeah, for sure. Now that was definitely, I would have to agree with you on that. That was a really Don't good Don't agree. Trip. I want to hear yours. Well, <laughs> I feel like we can have the same. Well, let me think. I'm also trying to think, but I, to touch on that, it was a great trip. Um, the, the worst one was the time before that, which I'm like, Tulum's a little bit like, a little iffy with me because I just feel like the la the time before that was just like really the shittiest trip we had. But I think it's kind of ironic though. There's yes. there, there's irony in that for sure. And then I think that one was like amazing. I can't agree with you know agree with you more that like that trip was really great. But I'm trying to think of another experience that we've had together that was really great. Oh, I'm surprised. Maybe you know, New I'm York. Surprised. Oh yes, I was about to say that. Uh, I'm surprised she's not talking about New York uh, and the. Uh, yeah, know, we don't have to go into too much detail, but times. that was. Um, <laughs> That was another good experience because it was kind of like a rekindle again. And uh, I don't know. That, that, was, that just, was the first one. Yeah. And then yeah. the second one was, and the last one was Tulum. Yeah. Well, the, that was the first one that was, which led to Tulum pretty much because the same yes. time frame. Yep. You're right. Um, we just were like, all right, we need to go on vacation. Yeah, we actually did. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. it was. So, um, so I'd say those were top two for sure. Oh. Um, but we have so many good experiences. Oh, I love together. you, man. <laughs> love you. That's a great question, um, though. Good question, David. Yeah, it is. Um, okay. Uh, where's the other one? No, oh, that was. Oh, some like wrestling questions. Do you want to answer those? Probably good for you. Um. So. Well, I guess they're just like talking. They want to know like the process, um, like to get into WWE and stuff like that. And it, it all depends on everyone. Like my process, which I've touched on, um, was through a reality show. I got recruited for um, a reality show called Tough Enough from bodybuilding. So it's just kind of one of those things. So it all depends on, you know, your background, where you come from. Um, Sabby also got recruited for WWE. Um they saw his six pack abs in the gym and were like, who is that? Let me get some of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it all depends. But, um, uh, do, 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 do. I got a question for you guys. Go ahead, yes, Ben. I like please. Ben's questions. I got a question. They're off the cuff. Yeah. So, all right. So you guys are both been in the entertainment business, right? Yeah. Now I know some things probably have a way that they're supposed to be played out. Right. Has there ever been a time, well, I'm sure there has, but what's the craziest off-scripted thing that has ever happened to you guys? Like Ooh, during a, good one. During yeah. a, mm. a during show, a, like, a yeah, li like a live, live. Yeah, live yeah. show match. So I have one. Uh, I, I think there's probably like a good list though, like of things. There's always, you know, God forbid there's an injury or something happens, you kind of always have to take a different route. But I kind of have a funny one that I've never really shared before. Um, Elimination Chamber, first ever tag team for the women at the Elimination Chamber. Sonya Deville and myself were tag team partners. Uh, super excited for this match. It was, um, we, we loved our part in it. We were gonna be in for a long time. You know, we went over the match a bunch of times. We were super excited. We were starting. And like I said, we were uh, gonna be like towards the end. We didn't win, but so I, had this brilliant idea, which I don't know why I did this, but I had a, I wanted to keep, put my hair up. I always wore my hair down, but I wanted to put it up. So I had this like big ponytail extensions. And I don't know if you know anything about like ponytail extensions, but they're heavy. <laughs> so they, the makeup girl, the makeup and hair girls, like basically we had to make sure that shit was tight. So they tied some like crazy rubber bands around it. Like that shit was really tight. And it was a really bad idea because it was heavy, really, really heavy. So like, oh my God. So there's pictures and videos out there. So I, the beginning of the match, I come out, um, we do our entrance, you know, we look good. We look, everything's all up good. And then the first spot we call it in the match, it was against um, Bailey and Mercedes, also known as Sasha. And it was like a double team thing that we were doing. And someone, I think I was on the mat and like you get your hair pulled a lot, but like usually people like will step on it and stuff. So like someone stepped on my hair like a little bit or whatever it was. So the ponytail started to come out. So I could feel it. And this type of match, you have breaks and stuff. And there's, you know, how many other tag teams in it? There was like four or five, whatever. So I could feel it coming out. So I'm like, shit. So 
finally Daria and I like roll to the outside to do something and it's like it's like hanging at this point so no one really can see us but of course they they did see us because there's cameras everywhere so I'm like I'm like Daria I'm like get the hair out like pull the hair out so she's like what what and she's like very aggressive all the time and like even her grip strength everything so she's like rolls over to me and she's trying to take the hair out but they tied it so tight because that for like it to stay up that it was wrapped and wrapped and like there were so many things going on there so we couldn't we couldn't come <laughs> like it wouldn't come off like there was a velcro thing like she yeah, was so like she's, pulling she's, she's like pulling. yanking yeah she's, <laughs> she's like pulling it yanking it yanking it and then finally somehow um it, she gets most of it but there's like a, a tail like something's hanging and then my hair underneath was short, obviously not, you know, not super short. It was like shoulder length probably, but it was in a ponytail from the other ponytail. So I, it became like a side pony and it was so bad. And then it gets worse. So she finally gets it out. She's like yanking it. We get back in the ring to do something. It's like a standoff of like the four of us, I believe. And this we have a photo for sure of. And my hair is a side pony. Then I have, I went with this like dark lip, which I don't know why I was feeling, I was feeling badass. And I had lipstick on my teeth, but I couldn't get it off because it was like a stain. So I had a side <laughs> pony and lipstick, lipstick on your and teeth. And it was like black. It looked really bad. It was like a like dark. It was like dark purplish on my tooth. So and the thing with the girls, like if that happens, you always like you're always like a you know, lipstick on your teeth. Like you always try to look out for each other. So everyone's like trying to tell me, and I'm like, I know, I'm trying to get it off. <laughs> I can't get it off. So there's like a picture of me standoff, trying to be all badass side pony lipstick on my teeth and I was just like like trying to be all tough and it was so cringe to watch back because I was like oh my god that is so embarrassing but like shit happens and there's always you, you never stopped you went with yeah, you oh yeah freaking no you have to keep going yeah. you can't stop um no matter what happens I mean I've I've had titties fall out all all of that titties fall <laughs> have out. have you ever had a um a T wardrobe malfunction because the guys it's oh, like yeah I have so much I had a wedgie one time like my whole <laughs> ass was out are you kidding it me? Good. It's good. It's all over Twitter. Yeah, but I always wonder your guys' shit down there. Like, we obviously, things move and stuff. Like, how does your guys' shit stay so much intact? And you guys don't wear, like, cups. Like, well, how no, because I, I, like I used not just to wear, out. like, this real. <laughs> oh, I think I found your little undies no. that you put underneath them. Yeah, like, I, you have to get these, like, little, like, almost like. Uh, what are they called? Like, uh, Chippendale, <laughs> Chippendale, like, undies almost. Like, where, like, it just holds the package real nice. But That's it's like, right. like, it's literally like almost, it wasn't quite a thong because it was like, you know, I'd wear it whatever. your butt. But it, it would cover a little bit, but like, it was like, I would never wear them ever in my life. It wasn't wearing Well, your shorts, trunks. your cheeks really like were out too. Yeah, but that's just, that, that was on purpose. You know, I had, I had to have all ladies screaming. You know what I'm talking about, Ben? You know, and Tino uh -huh. comes out, you know. And when my, my mom first <laughs> saw him, she was like, the size of his legs. And she's like, and his ass. Oh my <laughs> God. You and Riddick. And I was like, okay, mom, take it easy over there. But she was also at an NXT show and she was like this, like she could touch you. Yeah, that so was I was crazy. like, all right, easy over there. My mom's getting excited looking at your ass. I really thought though, I thought Mandy was going to talk about the spot where she had a take a table out underneath oh, the ring. Oh my and God. And she was supposed to open the table. <laughs> She was supposed to open table and then stand the table up and then do like a spot on the table. And Stop. she she couldn't get the table to stand Stop. up. So she just oh. like threw it. <laughs> I, that's really great that you brought that up. You know why? You know why? Because there are so many people out there that love to just like oh, post that randomly because there's a video. It. So it's all my fans it's okay, out there. Babs. No, it's all my fans out there. I'm glad it's you brought okay. that up. Because I want to tell the story of how it happened. No, no, no. It's okay. No, no. Because it's okay. <laughs> Okay, I, well, if we're going most embarrassing moments, that was definitely one ben, of like them. like, you couldn't get the table over. <laughs> ben, you, you want to go and watch the video really we're, bad. We're gonna because listen, we're going to find that clip no. for this podcast. So embarrassing. Find the clip. We all have these moments. You can't find it, Ben. We'll find it. So let me, let me just explain something to you. I practiced, because people don't realize those tables are heavy. Heavy, yeah. They're heavy. They're hard. You're in the middle of the moment. You're blown. All these things. Oh, that was the worst match of my babe, life, though. It's okay. Darry and I both... We both say that was the worst match. It was so many things going on in our life. It was very bad, um, very bad match. But we practiced that. I practiced that so many times that I was like, oh, I got this. And for some reason, I went the wrong way because I, I tried to lift it like that. And if you, you just can't. And then I'm trying to kick it up, and I can't get it up. And it's like moving with me. Danilo, the ref, who we're good friends with, 
was trying to help me so bad that he's like, he's like, the other way, the other side, the other side. He's trying to tell me. And then he's telling me it's getting so bad that it's taking so long that he's like, forget it. Fuck the table. Forget it. Forget it. Like, go, like, cause to, we weren't even using it. We were teasing it. It's a whole thing where you like always tease the table spot and then eventually you fall on it or whatever. But we didn't even have that spot of falling. So he's like, just fuck it. Like we won't even tease it. And he kept telling me just like, you know, be plan. Like, and oh, I, yeah, and I was yeah. like, no, no, I got this. And it was so that was funny, freaking though. embarrassing that I can't even no, like, it's not embarrassing. that was actually worse than me slipping. I think at WrestleMania. No, really? Those are top two. But I, I think that might've been one of the most embarrassing moments of my career. Well, listen, because people still we, haunt me with it. They go, they go, Mandy Rose versus the table, WrestleMania 38. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think it but was you know like what, trending. Though? Mandy Rose versus but the table. Listen, I think we've I think we've spoken about this before. I'm not sure, but you know, uh, I think your slip at WrestleMania was like a little bit of karma because you know Mandy's the type of person. You sound that, like Dario no, right now. No, Mandy's the she type of person. The if you slip and fall, she's hysterically <laughs> laughing before she asks you if you're okay, and she's like really obnoxious about it. So it's almost like. Like when Mandy's around and you fall, it's like more embarrassing because she's laughing at you, right? But then she'll be like, are you okay? Like 10 minutes later, like, what do you mean I'm okay? It's 10 minutes ago it happened. But I think it's kind of karma because she got, always like got off of other people slipping. So when she slips, slipped on the biggest stage ever. But I'll tell you something. <laughs> That's I will... why Daria, when I came back from the, behind the uh, curtain, oh Daria was like, felt bad laughing. But she was like, it's karma. she was like, friend, I hate to say this. She's like, but... You're the worst when people fall. Oh, like, I think that was karma. I'm like, yeah, karma's fucking but real. But I will say this, babe. I will say this. Very impressive how you played it off. Like, I got back up. You know, you got I no. But just the way slipped again just in the ring. The way no. you played it off was very good. But uh, um, the best was um, I was supposed to do something <laughs> right when I got in, but it was basically um, it was gonna go off of how slippery it was. Because guys, let's remember, please, it was pouring raining. We're getting this an, slip on this podcast. Oh, we Thank are. You. That's fine. Um, <laughs> it's, most, it's gonna be the most embarrassing moments for Mandy. It was very slippery. AJ Styles slipped that night. Someone else slipped. I had the best one, but it was an open. At least it know. wasn't Titus O'Neil. Oh my God! No, he for sure takes the uh, cake with that one. Nobody Titus. Beats that. I was, and that's probably another karma reason. I was crying on the floor when <laughs> Titus <laughs> fell. Obviously, finding out that he was fine after because he was in the ring. Like I couldn't. I called so many people. I'm like, oh my God, guys, you you won't even believe what you, it, I was just. Hysterical. And I don't know what it is. Pe I love people, people that fall. The people that know that clip, honestly, <laughs> off, off off the cuff, he is very lucky he didn't blow very. out his shoulder. There's there's a metal beam. Oh my god, that it's is, like a couple sits, beams, right? No, but the the middle one sits right in the middle. Yeah, you would know. Like you literally, <laughs> I do. I do. I saw the break. So did you? <laughs> I didn't but, do that uh, part though. But uh, there's a metal beam that sits right in the center of of that. Uh, and it, it, I mean, what I'm talking about it is metal. There is, you hit this, you boom, you're dead stopping. And the way he flew underneath of it, yeah. I mean, and there's a metal beam. Here's the funny thing Ben, have there's, you ever seen that clip? You gotta look at there's, it. Up. There's, there's honestly, if he honestly, in my opinion, God was with him on this one because if yeah. you do that 10 times, I think eight times you hit one of the bars. Oh, for sure. Like, so the, the one or two, the 10% the, the or 20% of the time that you don't, he got it at one time, which he got really lucky, but and the, that was the, unbelievable. The velocity. Oh, he was that full sprint. He had. Thank God he's a great athlete too. That guy's a yeah, college football player. Yeah, the velocity that took him under, and then the best is my favorite the way part. He's... The other way, my favorite part is he army crawls out basically <laughs> and jumped. It was a, it was a Royal Rumble, so you have to get in the ring. So and jumps out and jumps through, and all the guys in the ring are going, "Oh my God, did that really just happen?" Because they obviously had to replay it and you know make sure it, it was insane. He definitely takes a cake with that, but I do have one of the best ones too. It's okay, man. Um, but it's okay. We it's all okay. listen. We all fall. It's not about the fall. It's about how you get up and you keep exactly, going. Exactly, babe. Okay, exactly. that's the message here. Keep telling yourself that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's good. Do you have any specific moments that you remember that you had? To, Honest, like, honestly, my worst one was unfortunate because it was when I got injured. So I was in the main event. Um, for the belt, actually, in Largo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Big crowd. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but the way you were Largo. going with that, you were 
were like, I was up for the WWE World title. No, no, no. It was NXT Championship, okay? Don't, for don't. The, for the belt. Listen, NXT and Championship, like, okay? Don't don't put labels no, on no, this no. shit. No, no, no. Listen, right? I had it for 413 days. I exactly. didn't put labels. But the way, because you're so, you're so persuading yeah, with you your know. voice is so good. He's like, for the belt. For the belt, you know. In Largo. No big deal. Like, no big in front deal. of 20 people. <laughs> you, know, you know what the crazy thing about that injury and about that, uh, about that night, too, is I wasn't even supposed to work. I wasn't yeah, supposed to be on the didn't show. They call you? Yeah, I actually had a match with Alistair Black the week, the night before, and um, I don't remember where Tampa or Gainesville. Somebody. It was actually a pretty big event. It was like maybe like three, four, five hundred people. Watch Woo! out! But um, no, it was actually a really big event, and uh, it was with uh, against Alistair Black, who was the champion at the time, and uh, it was I think maybe my first title solo title match, singles title match. Uh, and to be honest with you, man, he was such a good partner to work with, such a good opponent, and it was probably my best match to date. Yeah, I remember and, you saying they yeah, were all, everyone was like, yeah, wow. Everyone that was match putting was me really over good. like that, that, you know, Tino has arrived and Terry, Ugh, t Terry Taylor um, pulled me aside actually and said, hey, man, that's the best I've seen you look since you've been here. Uh, I'm telling, I'm calling Triple H tonight when I leave here. We're so excited. Like you're and there. And Terry Taylor don't beat her yeah, on the Yeah, and Terry she Taylor don't... is probably the most honest but just blunt yeah. person coach wise. So yeah. that was a big step for me. And I remember it was a Friday night. I'll never forget it. And I remember driving home that night and I was like, okay, man, like, I'm now, it's time, you know, they've been trying to build this character, they've been trying to build this moment. So I was I actually went to sleep, I was that night, I woke up, and actually I woke up to a phone call from Terry Taylor, actually, at about, about nine o'clock, whatever it was. And he's like, hey, Tino, he's like, uh, listen, I was talking to Triple H last night, they were all so impressed, he goes, we want you to do it again tonight, um, against um, Velveteen Dream, I think it was against, actually it was, yeah, Velveteen mm -hmm. Dream. So I was like, he's like, you want to work? And I was like, yeah, why not, man? Let's, let's ride this momentum. I mean, yeah. two title matches in a row. Like, H was excited. Uh, so he's like, right. he's like I'm going to be there too, so we'll go, whatever. Boom, boom. So I get to the arena, and um, we put a good match together, and it was just so unfortunate because it was about, I think we had like 20 minutes. It was the main event. Wow. And at the, right at the beginning of his comeback, it was probably like, maybe 13 minutes in the match. And so we still got seven, eight minutes in the match. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, first, it was it, the the comeback was um, bump, bump, drop, kick, drop, kick. And the second drop, no, the first drop kick, he put his foot right like in my muscle junction, right in my pec, and I tensed up. And as I tensed, all I remember is like, Almost looking down and seeing my chest go like it just it almost oh. like it almost like just like I saw it go boom boom like flubber and I was like what the heck was that so I bumped and I got up again and then he hit me with something else again and as I bumped I actually was on the ground and I was supposed to get up and I didn't and then he he went to pin me and it was like one two and I kicked out and I was like yo I think my chest is messed up we were like you know communicating but we oh. had like seven minutes left in the match and it was the main event so now it's like what, what do I do yeah. So we actually kind of improvised for about two minutes, and then I, I, at one point I was like, "Yo, just just hit me something big off the roof." Oh, it, so you did work a little bit. I after worked that? about another minute, and I tried to lift my wow. arm, and I couldn't lift it. Ugh. So I remember, and, and you know, funny thing is, it didn't even hurt. Like it didn't even really hurt. Like really? I just looked down, and I saw my, I saw like a little gap, like a little hole in my pec. Oh. And then um, that's why I tried to work for another hour. I mean, sorry, another hour? minute. Sorry, another <laughs> minute. And by then, I, I I forgot we were like communicating. I just I think I told him hit me with a big frog splash or something and just pinned me and oh. then I rolled right out but it's so funny because you know the wrestling fans are so smart I remember like all over the social media all over they the next day like oh Tino got hurt Tino got hurt because it's not the way the main event was supposed to end um, uh. but yeah that was that was probably the only time that I had to emphasize, emphasize like a emphasize. lot and uh, but it was unfortunate so it yeah, is what it is injuries really are really unfortunate especially when you're in the moment in the ring and you, you got it you, all, you have to be very you have to listen really well. You have to be able to listen to the ref. You know, if someone is really injured, like more seriously, when it, if it comes to like the neck and stuff, like they they'll put up the X. So like if you as an opponent, like you have to make sure you see that because the bouncing doesn't help anything. Like if you have a neck injury, like you can't be bouncing in a ring. So some people think that you know you could keep moving, but the producers in the back are talking to the ref. They see it. They saw you know they saw a bad bump, whatever it is. They got to tell them. So it's like there's so many things that are going on. But then you also want to like still have you know sometimes like you said you just you improvise and you let them hit you with something just to be just to finish instead of just stopping there. But you could also kind of make it worse the injury if you keep going yeah absolutely. so and that's so that's so interesting because i never really knew that but <clears throat> the fact that you guys can you guys are true entertain like you are thinking on the spot you yeah. guys are literally literally things could go completely and you can't be like hey 
sorry, we got to stop. You guys are yeah. like, okay, what? You're acting. You're, I mean, you're, 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 yeah, you're that's what I was going to say. You're it's, full blown. It's, it's yeah. like you said, yep. there's no timeouts. There's no stop. Nothing. And I think, I think what Mandy said is, is that people don't realize it is such a complicated but complex thing. Yeah. Like you might only be out there 10 minutes. But you are doing so many things in ten minutes yeah. that I can't even. And I, I actually, I think I spoke on the show before. I mean, I had the privilege to start, you know, in the NFL at three different positions, which is really rare: linebacker, strong safety, free safety. And I'll tell you, man, that was easy compared to being, you know, being Tino the character sometimes, wow. being out there with the fans and being out there. Like Mandy says, you got to listen. You got to uh, listen to the ref. You got to listen to the time. You listen to the fans. You got to listen to the yeah. opponent. You, you, you're playing a character. You got to hit a time frame. Um, I was going to say, all of that going on, and you have to play a character. And, like yeah. that, and, and exactly. you're, 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 you're rememorizing a choreographed y Yeah, you dance, got, yeah, you got, right? Yeah. So now you're like, oh my, dude, you got like, oh my gosh. So like, yeah, it's that's why, man, Listen, don't it's, realize how it's much, amazing how good these people are. Yeah, and how much is just involved in it. Like, hundred percent, man. It's crazy. It's it's a lot. It is. Um, it really is a lot. So it's uh, a yeah. great question, Ben. By the way, Thank you. that um, was a great question. But uh, I probably have so many more embarrassing moments. No, it's okay. You have <laughs> a lot okay, of though. great moments too, babe. Yes, always good with the bad, which so, we, we we love. Well, listen, I'm looking forward to some of our future. Um, podcast or future episodes we got some great guests coming we had a great guest last week um i'm so excited to continue to grow i think we're getting great feedback i love that we the fans are you know really interacting and like i said please if you have questions you have something we want to talk about if you're struggling with something in life um just know you're not alone out there just you know ask any questions you want um but yeah, email, uh, email us at power alphas podcast at gmail with your questions or anything you have to say, we love to hear it. We appreciate all the feedback and everything that we get because it only makes us improve and, and grow. So thank you guys um, for being a part of this journey with us. So um, make sure you send those questions in and thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. We are also on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and a new, very new platform coming soon. Um, so yeah, thank you guys and we'll see you guys next time.